painting with oil can be kind of tricky, but also once you get the hang of it, it's it's pretty straightforward and flexible and very forgiving, I would say. Um, starting any painting, you want to have like a rough idea in mind, and for this one is just a simple lemon and lime tree. Um, and then to actually get started, to like just hit the ground running, I like to start by making um, or establishing the form, the general form of uh, whatever I'm painting. So in this case, it's like the, the branches, the trunk, uh, and the general outline of how much uh, space this tree is going to take up. Um, so I can just like make a rough outline of the silhouette. And then once that's established, I can come back in and start filling it in. It also gives me a good opportunity to um, establish where the light is coming from and therefore where uh, the shadows are gonna be as well. And then just to get started, I mean, it's a, it's a lemon tree, so I like to start usually with like the darkest part, like I've got a little line right there, there, and there. Um, and it's just the general sap green color for oil, um, and then a cadmium yellow for the lemons. Um, and again, like same thing, just on a smaller scale. I'm starting out with the general shape of, uh, of the lemon here, or the lime, and then coming back uh, to add shadows and texture, and maybe even um, more light to specify. Uh, where the light's coming from and depending on who you talk to um, mixing uh, for me is kind of like as you go on the fly uh, for a lot of I think uh, more methodical uh, painters they like to mix um, on their palette and then just place where that color uh, where that like light and shadow is going to go um, I like to just do it on the fly because oil paint you can start like this and then come back three days later and it's still wet you can still mix uh, as you go and if you mix as you go it's like you can again it's like more forgiving you can come back with uh, terpenoid or whatever paint thinner you're working with and just erase it and then like uh, or erase little parts of it to uh, correct uh, specify and make more accurate where you want your things to go. So for now, I've established that the light is kind of coming in this direction, creating shadows here and here, and then I'm going to add more. Um, but if the light ever changes, I can just come back, again, because it takes a while to dry. And even once it's dry, when, like you can just layer on top of it. So it's never set in stone once you put it down. And you can kind of like mold it and drag it out. Like I can drag out uh, these shadows right here. That's okay. It's gonna mix in with what's already there. And I can also just kind of like drag them around like such. And then for lemon trees, if you ever have a, like a reference picture, you can just um, use your picture. Like lemon trees have this kind of like Y shape uh, to their leaves, uh, so it's easy to just like put that all over. And then again, using like the lightest color to show where the, where the sun is hitting and then coming back to that same one with a little more white and then a little more dark to uh, specify and make more accurate uh, the, the lighting. Mm. If you notice, I never use black in any of my paintings. I usually mix for black because once you put black on uh, the canvas or the whatever material you're working with, it ends up looking not black or just kind of, um, it's kind of void. Mixing for black makes like, makes the dark's a lot more accurate and precise, I think. Mm. Like another, there's like a pretty good gunk of, um, of paint right there. And then for me, it's not so much about 
painting something, it's about like setting paint down and then molding it in such a way um, that it gives uh, more texture to whatever I'm painting. Like this lemon is pretty flat right here. Um, but then I'm gonna come back to it. So I can add a little lemon right here. Okay. It's pretty thick. It's just the outline. I'm like keeping in mind where the light's going, coming from, and we're just gonna hit on this lemon. So like right here, the more paint I added, uh, obviously the thicker it is, but also the brighter the yellow. And then once it starts spreading and thinning out over the course of the surface, uh, it's gonna like start to mix in with the color of the wood and dim it out little by little. And I can leave little gaps right here or uh, create gaps as I go along, like over here, let's say. There's another little lemon. Um, and right here, it's kind of like, almost like making a little moon uh, where I have like a bright side and then like a dark side of the moon. And I just like apply less pressure and it makes it thinner. So I have a general outline of where it's gonna be and an implication of where the shadows uh, are going to be on this specific lemon. Cool.